Welcome to the Glenn Beck Program. America, tonight I ask you to watch this program with an open mind. I ask you to put your partisan differences aside and really listen, and then do your own homework. Don't take my word for it. Research yourself. This is far too important. The topic tonight and tomorrow night, George Soros. There are things that are happening in this country that don't make sense. Van Jones said something that bothered me over the summer. I mean, he said a lot of things over the years that have bothered me, but one comment in particular over the summer stuck with me, and it was this. You handle the top down, but it's also bottom up and inside out. Top down, bottom up, and inside out. So now your challenge as you leave here, our challenge, is to take care of that bottom up part and that inside out part, the heart part. That's not, that's bothered me because I know who this guy is. He's a communist revolutionary, a guy who, who pined for the days of Stalin. The Iron Curtain went down. Something's wrong there. Well, it really bothered me until recently when I started looking into all the George Soros connections and the size and the scope of his reach. And let me tell you something. I, I said to you, read up on George Soros. There's plenty of ways to read about him. These are all books about George Soros, many of them written by him. So there's no shortage of information. And read them. Read them. The comment doesn't bother, any me, doesn't bother me anymore. I understand what it means. And that's why that comment now frightens me. And I will put it into perspective tonight and tomorrow. Pull back the curtain and reveal what that actually means. And it will terrify you. There's a couple of other things that you'll understand. First of all, in 2003, Soros and a partner funded the new $5 million liberal group, MoveOn.org. Well, MoveOn.org, what, what exactly is that? Well, you remember it. This is the group that uh, originally called General Petraeus, General Betraeus. It was despicable. Well, who had they tapped for the executive director of MoveOn.org? This guy, Zach Exley. I've never heard of him before. Do you know who he is? Well, he previously had trained activists for the anarchist group, the Ruckus Society. These are the riots in Seattle, helped orchestrate by this guy. More on that in just a minute. Oh, by the way, he's also a blogger for the Huffington Post, which is interesting because the Huffington Post gets money from George Soros. Oh, and he's also a fellow with the George Soros Open Society Institute. Violent radicals. Oh, and by the way, it's just not that phrase that came. George Soros has been following him as he originally funded the Ella Baker Society or uh, the Center for Human Rights. And then, of course, he was on the Apollo Alliance. And then when he got fired from the White House, he went to Center for American Progress, which is also funded by George Soros. Radicals. Radicals. Oh, the Open Society Institute, in case you don't know what this is, don't worry, you will in the next couple of days. The Open Society Institute is George Soros's most important group. It is really spectacular. It is his philanthropist arm. This is where he really, he looks for Mother Teresa to give out his precious money. And boy, did he find Mother Teresa. Well, not exactly. He found, to head this organization, the founder of the violent activist group SDS, Students for a Democratic Society. You don't know what they did in the 60s? You will. One string, $425 million every single year. The strings that are being pulled by the puppet master. Hello, America. There are a few working parts to a, uh, a puppet show. There is the... Uh, the Puppet master here. There's the stage. There's the audience. There are the strings to each puppet. And then there's the story. But there's also why. Why is the story? Why is the show happening? What is the puppet master? What is his motivation? Is it for the money? Is it for entertainment? Is it personal gain? What is it? Make no mistake, we are watching a show. The stage is the world. It's television, it's newspaper, it's speeches, it's the political elections, it's what's happening in Washington. You are the audience. And like any good show, they do have one goal in mind. They want you to feel something. 
But most shows don't have a, a hidden meaning behind it. They just want you to laugh. They want you to be entertained. This one, not so much. At the end of the show, you have a choice to make. They want you to get up from your seats. Of course, they have in mind what they are planning on you choosing, and they are just using this stage to try to make the case and convince you of it. It's really propaganda. Um, here's the propaganda book. Here it is. This is actually from uh, one of um, Wilson's nasty, nasty guys. This, this is the book that I've told you before on propaganda that Hitler used. Um, Goebbels. I just want to show you in propaganda, this is D. Now this is what's taught in schools. D. Democracy is administered by the intelligent minority who know how to regiment and guide the masses. That's great. This is Edward Bernays. Let me give you the whole quote here. He says, the conscience and intelligent manipulation of organized habits and opinions of the masses is an important element in a dem democratic society. Those who manipulate this unseen mechanism of society constitute an invisible government, an invisible government, maybe almost a shadow government, remember that, which is the true ruling power of our country. Do we have a shadow government? Answer it now, remember how you answer it, and then... Answer it again after today's show and tomorrow's show. The question is, do we have a shadow government? And if we do, who are those intelligent minority that is, that is guiding us through? And who, where are they guiding us to? If you skip past all of the puppets and the strings, if you stop looking at the puppets themselves, you have to see who's behind the puppets. Who is choosing the puppets and the players? Who's the puppet master? George Soros. Now, I am sure that this will be called a conspiracy theory, and quite honestly, a year ago, two years ago, I wouldn't have believed it myself. But it is right out in the open. I encourage you, do not take my word for this. Do your own research, and don't go to conspiracy websites or anything else. Go to his own books. <laughs> go to the biographies written about him. Go to things that are well-documented, uh, like... 60 minutes, um, things that are well known for their accuracy. We have all of the materials that put this show together at glenbeck.com and in my free email newsletter. I want you to see the footnotes on this program. Do not take anything I say as gospel tonight. I want you to decide for yourself. I want you to question with boldness. Is George Soros a man who says, yes, you will be perfect and you will be perfect? Is he really a puppet master? And if he is, how does he control? How does he control? Well, let's start with this. Let's just take a couple of examples here on what George Soros has said and then see if there's any connection to anything. Soros spoke at Columbia University. He talked about an urgent need for campaign finance reform. I want you to remember, questioning our elections is important to George Soros. You'll understand in about 20 minutes. Well, he wanted to have uh, campaign finance reform. He thought it was important. He spoke at Columbia University about it. Well, Open Society, his, his little group, Open Society, started by the guy with SDS, it was one of only a handful of groups who spent $123 million to push finance reform. Soros, quote, said, do something about the distortion of our electoral pro pro uh, process by the excessive use of TV advertising. So he wanted to make sure that lies couldn't distort things. Well, it wasn't long after that speech at Columbia University that, lo and behold, Senator Russ Feingold, a progressive, and a few months later, uh, with um, uh, John McCain, a Republican progressive, had came with a proposal in hand for what would eventually become the McCain-Feingold Act. The irony, if it is, is that McCain-Feingold ultimately led to the explosion of 501c3 groups, which can advertise at will. 501c3 groups. Hmm. Oh, 501c3 groups? You mean like... Sojourners, or Color for Change, or the Tides Foundation, or Media Matters, or People for the American Way, or MoveOn.org, Center for American Progress, the, Eli uh, the Apollo Alliance, Eller Saker for Human Rights. You mean those things? You see, we had the McCain-Feingold Act, and then mysteriously, almost 
unbeknownst to everyone, those groups became very powerful, much more powerful. And guess who controls most of the most powerful? George Soros. George Soros, in the aftermath of 9-11, talked about police action as an alternative to war. Now, did anybody pick up on that? This is what he said. War is a false and misleading metaphor in the context of combating terrorism. Crimes require police work, not military action. George Soros. Here he is, the Democratic candidate for president, adopting crimes require police work, not military action positions. What we've learned is that the war on terror is much more of an intelligence operation and a law enforcement operation. The war on terror is far less of a military operation and far more of an intelligence gathering law enforcement operation. And that's what we have now in our office starts with George Soros. Days after President Obama was elected, George Soros again set the agenda. He said, quote, I think we need a large stimulus package which will provide funds for state and local government to maintain their budgets because they are not allowed by the Constitution to run a deficit. For such a program to be successful, the federal government would need to provide hundreds of billions of dollars. In addition, another infrastructure program is necessary. In total, the cost would be between 300 and 600 billion dollar range. Well, what was on Obama's, the first thing on his agenda? the $787 billion stimulus bill. Gee, I remember this, and I remember saying at the time, who wrote this? It was too complex. It was too early in his, oh yeah, that's right, the Apollo Alliance. Where does the Apollo Alliance come from? The Tides Foundation. And where does the Tides Foundation get a lot of their funding? George Soros. Soros also heavily promotes green jobs and cap and trade. Also, days after Obama was elected, he called for a new energy bill. I think this is a great opportunity to financially deal with global warming and energy independence. The U.S. needs a cap and trade system with the auctioning of license for emissions rights. I would use the revenues from these auctions to launch a new environmentally friendly energy policy that would be yet another federal program that could help us overcome the current stagnation. Well, Congress introduced, but you stood up. You said, I don't think so. Mm -mm. The audience started to revolt. Cap and trade failed. Now, through Freedom of Information Act, we find out that the Department of Energy and the EPA actually coordinated their response to damning reports on green jobs from Spain with the help of George Soros and his Center for American Progress, which gets their funding from here, George Soros. Here it is, December 9th, 2004. Um, also, there was um, uh, this piece of information. Um, this guy, where is uh, Eli? Eli, um, a Pariser, there he is. He headed the Soros group, the front group, MoveOn.PAC. Now, he wasn't upset that Kerry lost. Why? He explained this in an email. This is important that you understand. Quote, in the last year, grassroots contributors, like us, gave more than $300 million to the Kerry campaign and the DNC and proved that the party doesn't need corporate cash to be competitive. It's now our party. We bought it, we own it, and we're going to take it back. Do you understand what just happened? George Soros got rid of all of the corporate money through McCain-Feingold which then allowed all the 501c3s to come in this one might help and this one might help and this one might help and all the 501 now make the party lift their hands the money is the string they control everything they tell the party what to do you've been watching a show you think the democrats are still democrats they're not they're not I want you to understand, there are two kinds of puppets here. The first puppet is the puppet organizations. You know, I don't know, this is the Musicians Union, and maybe this is SCIU, and the AFL-CIO, and ACORN. Their job on stage is to create an illusion 
of a big dramatic movement that is happening. A grassroots. You know how Nancy Pelosi is always saying, oh, that's a grassroots, and that's AstroTurf, right? They're, they're doing something on the stage, and they're getting you to believe something. But it's all part of the show. The second kind of puppet is an individual puppet. It could be John Kerry. Uh, it could be Van Jones. It could be Andy Stern, Richard Trumka. Perhaps President Obama. Have you ever wondered who's at the other end of a BlackBerry? No president has ever had that. That was a security risk. Why did we spend so much money? Who does he need to talk to? Who does he need to see texts from? Who's writing the damn speeches in the teleprompter everywhere? There are also two storylines. If you, if you would come to a show, there's always two storylines, and you'll see it in, in different movies about stages and stage performers. Even Moulin Rouge is just a uh, favorite uh, movie of my family. Two stories. There is what's happening on stage, and then there's the one behind the stage. You don't ever see what's happening behind. The story that they're telling on stage and they're acting out, you know. Oh, the government needs to spend more money to stimulate the economy. No, no, we need more government intervention. Those evil rich people won't spend their money. We need more taxes. All of that. You know this storyline. But how much of it is real? How much of it is orchestrated? Well, there's only one way to find out that answer. And that is you have to look behind the curtain. On this program over the years, we have shown you the people who are taking our country apart piece by piece, and we've shown it to you in their own words. Well, we didn't expect to find many of the things uh, that they've said because many times they've said these things and they thought they were behind the curtain. They didn't expect you to see these words, words from even the President of the United States. I happen to be a proponent of a single-payer universal health care plan. A single-payer health care plan. Universal health care plan. That's what I'd like to see. He's at AFL-CIO. That wasn't part of the storyline. It wasn't supposed to be revealed. That was behind the curtain. He was talking to the AFL-CIO. Behind the scenes. Over the next couple of nights, we'll do our best to give you a complete tour of the show. The puppets the money strings, the storylines, behind the stage, everything. Not just the parts they want you to see. And again, I don't want you to take my word for it. I want you to read all of this yourself. All of the links and information and additional reading material will be available at glennbeck.com. Also in my free email newsletter, you can sign up for it there. Also, we have put it on theblaze.com. There are news stories about George Soros today. And also amazing stories about violence from MSNBC. We have a commentator last night saying that um, we wonder if there should be a revolution. Of course he's uh, saying now, of course the answer is yes and maybe even a violent revolution. It's an amazing, it's amazing what you are missing um, when you don't know what you're looking for. This isn't a conspiracy. That was on MSNBC. It's all out in the open. I believe you take a man at his word and George Soros has publicly dedicated his life to this. He has even said he's willing to die for what he believes in. Here he is. In the things that I am engaged in, I'm actually willing to put my life at, at, at risk. And I think it's, it makes me feel uh, much more uh, complete. Well, you complete me, George. Um, I'm willing to put my life at stake, and so are many people in America. It's what you believe in. But what is it that he believes in? He has tens of billions of dollars all flowing in, pulling strings. His tentacles are everywhere. What is he going through all of this trouble for to achieve? Well, globalization. George Soros believes, quote, the main obstacle of a stable and just world order is the United States. Let that sink in for a minute. The main obstacle to a stable and just world order is the United States. We'll pick it up next there. Tonight, George Soros, and tomorrow night, even more. 
Uh, please DVR this series of shows. There's a lot of meat here that I need you to do your own homework on and learn the truth yourself. But we want to find out a little bit more about him and who he is and where did he come from. His childhood is shocking, traumatic. He grew up in Nazi Europe, 14 years old. He had to help the government confiscate the lands of his fellow, fellow Jewish friends and neighbors. He didn't grow up in a, a very Jewish household. His mother was a, a strong anti-Semite, George Soros's words, not mine. But when he had to go over and take the lands from the people, his Jewish friends and neighbors, who were being sent to the gas chambers, I can't imagine what that would do to a teenager, or anybody, an adult. Well, what did it do to George Soros? In an interview with Steve Croft, Soros was asked if he felt guilt at all about taking the property from the Jews as a teenager. He responded, no. He also said, quote, I don't deny the Jews their national uh, uh, existence, but I don't want to be a part of it. Last night, the phone calls came in to Fox already before the show even aired, and they were saying that, uh, there were Soros people, saying that I am an anti-Semite because I was going to report this. I mean, I'm probably more supportive of Israel and the Jews than George Soros is, but that's neither here nor there. I don't believe pointing out the man's tragic beginnings makes you an anti-Semite. On this program for the last couple of years, we've been telling you about the people and the places and the things that you had never even considered before. At least I hadn't. Most people hadn't. And I told you that there was a structure being put into place in our country, and it was designed to bring about the fundamental transformation that has been promised. Through the course of this journey of discovery, amazingly, all the paths, time after time, really led to one man, George Soros, one guy. There's a crisis collapsing our economy. George Soros. When the administration and the progressives look for a savior to step in and save the day, George Soros. He makes predictions and his loyal followers make sure they come true. He's pulled no punches about the end game. It's one world government. The end of America's status as the prevailing world power. But why? Well, if you want to understand the why, there, you have to ask questions, and there's a few things that you need to know about George Soros, and here they are. People generally uh, uh, play with, this, with a certain set of rules. I, I am particularly interested in changes in the rules of the game. Eighty years ago, George Soros was born. Little did the world know then economies would collapse. Currencies would become worthless. Elections would be stolen. Regimes would fall. And one billionaire would find himself coincidentally at the center of it all. He was born in Budapest, Hungary on August 12, 1930 as George Schwartz, the son of Orthodox Jews. Today, Soros is an atheist who doesn't embrace his Jewish identity and rarely supports Jewish causes or Israel. I've not been very engaged in Israel. Why not? I think there are enough Jews who, 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 to, to take care of Israel. In 1947, the Soros family relocated from Hungary to England, where George attended the Fabian Socialist London School of Economics. He moved to New York in 1956, became a U.S. citizen in 61, and at the age of 39, he started what would become the Quantum Fund, which he would use to attack currencies all across the globe. He later would be blamed for the financial collapses in Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, Japan, and Russia. And who could forget that he was the man who broke the Bank of England in 1992, shorting the British sterling by betting heavily that the currency would collapse despite government assurances to the contrary. Today has been an extremely difficult and turbulent day. Massive speculative flows continue to disrupt the functioning of exchange rate mechanism. The money that I made on this particular transaction, the estimate is about a billion dollars. Along with currencies, Soros also collapses regimes. With his Open Society Fund, which was founded in 1979, Soros has helped fund the Velvet Revolution in the Czech Republic. 
the Orange Revolution in the Ukraine, the Rose Revolution in Georgia. He also helped engineer coups in Slovakia, Croatia, and Yugoslavia. So what is his target now? Us. America. He said it himself on many occasions. He said, what I have done in other countries in terms of overturning uh, bad governments, I'm going to do in this country. Our country needs us. And we need people like George Soros, who is fearless and willing to step up when it counts. Political analysts say the shadow party he has built here greatly resembles those he created in other countries before instigating a coup. He created his own party within a party, or his shadow party, outside of the Democratic Party, the Center for American Progress. That was one of the original shadow party groups. This group, from the beginning, was charged with getting control of the conservative media. Many of the people in the Obama administration were just drawn right up from there. He spent millions in 2004 to drive President Bush out of office. He didn't succeed. But changing the attitude and policies of America, he says, remains his top priority. In one of his books, Soros writes, quote, the main obstacle to a stable and just world order is the United States, end quote. You wouldn't want a man like this anywhere near the President of the United States, would you? Soros has been granted at least four visits so far to the Obama White House. This, a man who has repeatedly called for the devaluation of the dollar. A slow uh, um, decline in the value of the dollar, a managed uh, decline. He's waged a war against capitalism. Capitalism is not directly opposed to open society. Nevertheless, it poses some serious threats. This is a man who wants the world to be one global society without borders or individual governments. One global society and one global gatekeeper. We are trying to describe a very complex problem in a very short period of time. It may take us three days to do this. I ask you that you would videotape or DVD every episode this week. I have been warning about a structure that progressives have worked to put into place. The health care bill, cap and trade, the stimulus bill. Thousands and thousands of pages that no 